Hey there everyone, and welcome back to Chemistry 3.4, and this topic is Lewis Diagrams. So a bit of revision from level 2. Lewis Diagrams are drawings of molecules showing how the valence electrons are linked. The electrons are always in pairs, and if you think back to PowerPoint 1, you'll now know that's because we're dealing with orbitals, and each orbital can hold two electrons. And non-bonding pairs are represented by two dots. So what we can see here is here's three examples, PCl3, CO2, and H2S. So how do you draw Lewis diagrams? That's the next question. And there's a nice four-step process to drawing them. And in this example, I'm going to use NF3 as the molecule. So the first step in any Lewis diagram drawing is to work out the number of electrons that we're playing with here. And you do not work out the number of electrons by just working out how many total electrons are in N and in F3. You only need to worry about how many valence electrons there are. So how many electrons are in the outer shell? And so we say that N has 5 valence electrons. Equally, if we look at F, 7 valence electrons. We've got 3 lots of F, and so we have 21 electrons between those 3 Fs. So now we know the total number of valence electrons are 26. So there must be 26 dots in our Lewis diagram. The next step is to find the central atom. The central atom is always the most incomplete or least electronegative atom. So what I mean by most incomplete is we know that atoms like to have a full valence shell of 8 electrons. We learnt that in PowerPoint number 2. So the central molecule will be the molecule that's furthest away from having 8 valence electrons. In this case fluorine has 7, so it's 1 away. And nitrogen has 5, so it's 3 away. And so now we know that nitrogen must be the central atom. So after this, what you need to do is you need to put the rest of the electrons onto the molecule. And you need to place them in pairs, because these electrons are always found in pairs. So that's what we've done here. We've put a pair here, a pair here, and a pair here. Here, 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 and here. It's important when you're placing these pairs, none of the atoms in the molecule have more than eight electrons surrounding them. So you've got two in the bond here, four, six, eight, so we're good there. Two, four, six, eight, so we're good there. Eight, so we're good here. And this one has two, four, six, eight, so we're good there. And then you check step four. You check that you've got the right number of dots. So we're good for the total number of electrons. And we need to check that the valence shells of all atoms are full. So let's try this again using COCl2. So if you went back to the periodic table, you'd find that carbon has four valence electrons, oxygen six, chloride seven. It's COCl2, so there's two Cl's, and so there'll be four electrons from the carbon, six from the oxygen, and 14 total from the two Cl's, seven from each, giving us a total of 24 electrons. So we've worked out the first step, now let's do the second step find the central atom. Well, we know carbon must be our central atom here, because the carbon is the least complete atom. It's the furthest from having a full shell of eight. And you can see that here. Carbon has four, so it's four away from having a full shell. Oxygen is two away from having a full shell, and chloride is one away. So carbon is the most incomplete. And then what we've done here is we've drawn the other atoms connecting to the central atom. Now what we've done is we've placed the remaining electrons in pairs around the atoms. So you've got eight around the Cl. You don't have eight around this one because you only have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven around the O. You do have eight around the Cl and you have seven around the C. So we, we've got a decent structure but we're not quite right. And that's why it's always important to check. Are the total number of electrons correct? Yes. We've got 24 here. Are the valence shells of all our atoms full? Well, they're not, no. So to get around this, what we do is we do something called making a double bond. And when you make a double bond, it's always going to be between the two odd atoms out. So in this case, the O is the odd one out, and so that will be where we form our double bond. Now remember that double bonds have four electrons present. Two from the initial bond, and two from the separate bond. So now the valence shells are full, and so we say this is the structure of COCl2. So here's a small variation, and this variation is for ions. Let's work through this for something like H3O+. So in the first step, we know that H has one valence electron, and O has six. And there's three H's, so it's one times three for the hydrogens, 
plus 6 for the oxygen, so that gives us 9. But remember that the plus sign means that it's lost an electron, and so we take away the electron it's lost, leaving us only with 8 electrons in H3O+. Hydrogen is different from the other atoms you're going to deal with. Hydrogen only has an s orbital and does not have a p orbital. So hydrogens can only take two electrons compared to the normal eight. And that's important to remember. And so the most incomplete is the O. So we put the O in the middle and add single bonds. You need to place the remaining electrons in pairs around atoms. And so we've added our pair of electrons. And then we check, are the total number of electrons correct? We're good there. And are the valence shells of all the atoms full? So we're good there. So step five for ions only. You draw a bracket around the structure and then you add the charge. And so that's an extra step that you need to take for ions only. So there's one final variation we need to go over and this is called the octet expansion. The octet rule is that atoms with an atomic number of greater than 14 can have 10 or 12 electrons surrounding them. And so in cases you're using stuff like phosphorus, sulfur, and others like that, you need to consider that as an option. Remember, it's only for atoms with an atomic number of above 14, though. Your most common ones will be phosphorus and sulfur. So let's do an example, PCl6-. And so the steps are exactly the same. And so the steps are, count the total number of valence electrons. So we know that P has 5 valence electrons, and Cl has seven, and there are six lots of Cl, so we need to add an electron. And that adds up to 48 valence electrons total. Now we find which is the most incomplete atom, so the furthest from having a full shell of eight, and we put that in the center. So in this situation, it's phosphorus, and surround it by Cl's, and add bonds to those Cl's, single bonds. After this, you need to place the remaining electrons in pairs around the atoms, trying to make sure there's only eight around each atom. And so now we check, does the total number of electrons add up to 48? Well, we have six slots of eight, and so yes, yes it does. Are the valence shells full? Well, the CLs are full because they've got eight, but wait, the phosphorus has 12. Then we remember the octet rule, the atoms with atomic number of greater than 14 can have 10 or 12 electrons. Step number five, only for ions, is you draw the brackets around the structure you've just drawn and add the charge, just so you let everyone know that it is an ion. So it's Lewis diagrams, what do you need to know? You just need to know the five step rule with a couple of exceptions. So you count the number of valence electrons and you do that using the periodic. Remember that you need to add extra electrons or take electrons away if the molecule is an ion. Secondly, you need to find the central atom. Step number three is that you place electrons in pairs around the atoms, trying to get approximately eight around each. In step four, you check. So you check that you've got the right number of electrons in your diagram, and then you check that all the electrons have full valence shell. If you've got something with more than eight electrons surrounding it, you look at the octet rule, and you look to see whether the atomic number is 14 or greater, if it is, then having above 8 electrons is fine. However, if it's not, then you've probably made a mistake. So if you've got more than 8 surrounding something and the octet rule is not active, look to make double or triple bonds until it works. Finally, and the fifth step is only for ions, you enclose the structure you've drawn in square brackets and you write the charge. Thanks for listening to this PowerPoint. In the next one, we're going to be going over the shape that molecules take when they're put in solutions. Cheers.